everyone, welcome to another NHD quick tip. This tip is specifically for our NHD paper writers out there. We're going to be focusing on the question of what is an appendix? We'll also consider, do I need an appendix? What should go in my appendix? And the most important question, does what I put in the appendix count towards my student composed words? I'm Ashley DeRacho, the program assistant here at NHD, and I am joined by our fabulous contest manager, Elena McNaughton, as we explore the role of the appendix in an NHD paper. So we should probably start at the beginning. Elena, what is an appendix? So an appendix is a section at the end of your paper where you can include any relevant images, graphs, or other primary source material that is helpful to your reader. Now the paper category rules can be found on pages 22 to 24 in your NHD contest rulebook and information specifically on the appendix can be found on page 23. Well, that sounds like a good place to start, but we also wanted to give you some of our top tips when it comes to creating an appendix. So, Elena, what should we keep in mind if we decide that our paper does need an appendix? So the first thing you want to do is make sure your appendix is formatted in either MLA or Chicago style, depending on what you're using throughout your paper. Your appendix should be labeled with a number or a letter. For example, appendix one, two, three, or appendix A, B, C. Each source in your appendix should have a proper title and it should have the same font and font size as the rest of your paper for consistency. All right, now, bigger question. What about word counts? How do those work with an appendix? So the same rules apply to the appendix as they do to the paper. So any student composed words that are in your appendix count towards your word count. So this means that if you explain, interpret, or analyze any of the sources in your appendix, you will need to include that total in your word count. Now, if the information that you're sharing is general information, like a citation, then the words do not count towards your student composed word count. All right, you heard it straight from the contest manager. Your student composed words do count if you're explaining, interpreting, or analyzing. So make sure if you're doing that, you're putting it where it really needs to go, in the body of your paper. All right, one last big tip from us. Avoid odds and ends. The appendix is not a place to cram in odds and ends that you couldn't fit into the paper. All the materials need to be relevant. And what we mean by this is, if you've got a source that you really like, but it doesn't really help your argument or explain how your project connects to the theme, it probably doesn't need to go in your appendix. So a good example of how you might include something in your appendix might be if you're working on a project that explores impressionist paintings and you decide to include an impressionist painting in your appendix. And this might be a painting that you're describing, analyzing, as it relates to your NHD historical argument in your paper. That's something that's relevant that you want to include. That helps the reader visualize the painting that you're talking about, especially if they've never seen that painting before. If you've got other things like that, those you want to put in your appendix. But if you've got other sources that you really like, but you ask, does this help my argument? those probably don't need to be in there. So avoid this as a place to just put all information. You wanna save that for your bibliography. You wanna keep relevant information in your appendix that's gonna help the reader broaden their knowledge of what you're talking about. So to help you understand this question of relevant a little bit more, we've pulled together some example appendices from historians to show you how they've used an appendix in the past to help broaden a reader's knowledge. So, Elena, what might we see in an appendix? So in Laurel Thatcher Ulrich's A Midwife's Tale, she adds an appendix to broaden the reader's knowledge of medicinal ingredients that are mentioned in Martha Ballard's diary. So this book is about a midwife, 
uh, known as Martha Ballard, and we don't really, as readers, might not know about medicinal ingredients that she uses in her diary, and we might not know plants that were native to where she is. So in this case, the appendix is explaining these ingredients to us and listing different types of plants that we might read about in the text itself. So this is helping broaden our knowledge of what Ulrich is talking about throughout her argument and her book. All right, another big one might be tables and charts, like Elaine Tyler May chose to include in her book, Homeward Bound. Now she's including these tables and charts because she's examining marriage and divorce rates in the United States. And she's looking at the income of families over the years, and she's looking about the education levels of families. So what do we notice from those numbers, right? She's, she doesn't have a place to put these tables in her actual, right, body of her book, because she's already referencing the numbers there. But in order to give you that broad scope of the data that she's collected, she puts it in her appendix because it's relevant information, but the overall table would be distracting to the reader as they're examining her argument. So you might have tables or charts if you're doing something that has statistical analysis related to it. If you do have a table or a chart that maybe you found, especially if maybe you're doing a project on immigration trends, this is where you'd want to put that whole table. You don't want to stick it right in the NHD paper. You only want to pull up the relevant information you need for your argument in the paper and then put the whole table in the back so the viewer can see where you got all of your information from. So tables and charts to the appendix. All right, what else can go in an appendix? So you can include photographs, you can include paintings, images, or other items that might distract from the body of the text. So like Ashley mentioned earlier, if you're doing a project on impressionist paintings and you want your reader to know what these paintings look like, you could put those paintings in your appendix. All right, so keep in mind, the first place you'll want to start is at nhd.org slash rules, where you can get a copy of our NHD rulebook. And you can review pages 22 to 24 on everything you'll need to know about the paper category. Keep in mind, page 23 has all of our references to appendices on it. And don't forget, don't forget to review the word count for the paper category. This will not only help you with your appendix, but with the rest of your paper. Happy writing!